Now, World of Warcraft players love their gear, and trinkets are one of their favorite pieces of equipment. So in this list, we'll be going over 10 of the most overpowered trinkets in the game's history. And at number 10, we have the Deathbringer's Will. This trinket dropped from Deathbringer Sourfang, an ICC-25 man, and what this trinket did was it had a random chance to transform you into one of the many races of Northrend. And when it did so, it would give you a very nice proc of one of five stats depending on your spec. And most of these specs were physical damage related, so this trinket was only used for physical damage in classes, as the proc had a chance to give you extra strength, attack power, crit, agility, and armor penetration. And almost everybody wanted that last status proc, because armor penetration was so good in Wrath of the Lich King that most specs wanted as much of it as they could possibly get. And trinkets that had the availability of giving you extra armor pen were very powerful, and this trinket had a chance to give you a crap ton of it. There's a reason they removed armor pen at the end of Wrath of the Lich King. Now, this trinket is kind of famous for being overpowered, even though it's kind of the weakest one on the list. Because what it did was give you a really good damage proc for 30 seconds. It was basically just a strong trinket, but not an overpowered one. You see, this trinket was very popular because it also had the unique distinction of transforming your character, which was a very rare thing for a proc to do, and in fact is still super rare to this day. It's not very often that a trinket or effect will randomly change the appearance of your character in combat. So I'm pretty sure that's why this trinket is considered so broken in the eyes of history, and why it was such a sought after trinket. There were reports that players were able to one-shot people in PvP thanks to this trinket, but as someone who personally did PvP in late Wrath of the Lich King when this trinket came out, I can tell you that I could two-shot low-geared people as well without the trinket. PvP was just kind of broken back then. Basically, trinkets that had armor pen were just really sought after, and this trinket was really cool, and also strong. So everybody wanted it, and if you look online for some of the strongest trinkets in WoW's history, I can guarantee you that people will bring up Deathbringer's Will in droves. Even though for my hunter back then, there was a trinket I could buy off of a vendor with valor points that technically simmed higher, I doubt it was actually the strongest trinket for every spec, but it was definitely an incredibly popular trinket. And at number 9, we have the Dragon Spine Trophy. This trinket was very simple, it just had a chance on hit to grant you some haste rating for 10 seconds on a 20 second internal cooldown. Now, the Burning Crusade is when haste was introduced to the game as a stat. Before then, you would get attack speed increases that specifically only worked on a handful of things, and there wasn't a standard haste rating yet. So when they added it to the game, there were a couple of bumps in the roads of getting the values correct. And the Dragon Spine Trophy kind of gave a whole bunch of haste a little bit too easily, as the amount of haste it gave per proc was equivalent to a bloodlust-like effect, i.e. around 30% haste. And since it was also an incredibly short internal cooldown, the trinket had about a 25% uptime at all times, which meant this trinket was the best in slot for a lot of classes all the way until the end of the expansion, even though the trinket was dropped from a boss introduced in the very first raid tier, Gruul the Dragon Slayer. In fact, some people used it all the way until Wrath of the Lich King came out, which was definitely the sign of a very strong trinket if it was able to last for all the tiers of raiding in an expansion. And what kind of contributed to this trinket's infamous status was the fact that it had an incredibly low drop chance. Ion himself mentioned that he ran Gruul's Lair for 14 months straight before he saw the trinket drop a single time for anyone in his raid team, and that wasn't a super uncommon story. Sure, the trinket was super good and could last you the entire expansion, but it didn't really mean anything if it never dropped, you know? Over the years, gear has gotten easier and easier to obtain, so you don't really hear stories about people farming a raid for 14 months to get one piece of equipment like this anymore. And this item is probably why we have the current gear system we have today. To an extent. And at number 8, we have Ramstein's Lightning Bolts. This is a trinket from Vanilla WoW, which dropped from Ramstein the Gorger in Stratholm, that simply had an effect to do AoE nature damage to everyone within 30 yards of you. It also did a lot of nature damage, and even scaled with stats and other methods after Vanilla WoW over the years. Basically, every time they make a change to the game, there's a good chance it messed up Ramstein's lightning bolts and made it broken again, as it just constantly breaks and scales weird. Although, we won't be really talking about that very much in this section, and more of its Vanilla WoW days, when this trinket had a 30 yard range on AoE. This is one of the largest ranges of an AoE in the game, outside of the original Druid Starfall ability. Generally, abilities don't have 30 yard radiuses, so this thing had a gigantic circle in which it could damage everything, which meant you could easily pull rogues out of stealth 
if they were somewhere within 30 yards of you, which was only 5 yards less than the standard single target ranged ability maximum range. Like many things in Vanilla WoW, this trinket's effect was probably an oversight, so it was nerfed in a patch to decrease its radius to 10 yards, down from the original 30, and they also decreased its damage too while they were at it. And this trinket was used over the years because, like I said a little bit earlier, sometimes new patches would break the trinket and allow it to scale with spell power, or your character's level, or I've heard it currently scales with versatility. So no one really knows if it's supposed to scale with any of these things, but sometimes it will randomly. And at number 7, we have the Unstable Arcana Crystal. This trinket was simply a stat stick and did nothing else. And its stats were so good that this trinket introduced at the beginning of the expansion as a drop from a world boss was still best in slot for a lot of classes all the way until the end of the expansion, assuming you got a Titan Forge version of it. Because you see, in Legion, they tried this new thing with gear, where rings and necklaces would no longer have main stats on them, and instead would have a whole bunch of secondary stats. That way, more classes could actually use them, and to give them a little bit more diversity from the rest of the gear. And this new philosophy of gear stats transferred over to trinkets to an extent, which is where this abomination of the unstable Arcana Crystal came from. All it had were secondary stats on it, and it had a ton of them, much more than an item of its item level should have had. Almost two times the amount of stats, actually. The stats on the one crystal were equivalent to wearing two rings of the same item level, and it was such an inflated oversight that Blizzard themselves talked about the unstable Arcana Crystal and how they didn't want to make mistakes like that trinket again in the future. They never did nerf the trinket in the expansion, though. They just kind of left it alone because people liked being able to have a trinket for the entire expansion. It reminded them of old times when they could get things like the Dragon Spine Trophy and be set until the next expansion. So the Unstable Arcana Crystal is probably the best stat stick in the game's history and easily makes it on this list with most overpowered trinkets despite the fact that it doesn't have any kind of special effects or ways to take advantage of it, like pretty much all the other trinkets on this list will have. And at number 6, we have the Prophecy of Fear trinket, which dropped from Hellfire Citadel in the Warlords of Draenor expansion. Now, what this trinket did was when you did damage to an enemy, you had a chance to proc a debuff on the target, which would then pulse for AoE damage every time you hit that target. So Arcane Mages could take advantage of this with abilities that hit a whole bunch of times in a small amount of time, like arcane missiles, in order to get an insane amount of damage from this trinket. And in fact, there were some videos of whole groups of arcane mages going into Hellfire Citadel while it was current content, and killing bosses in less than 20 seconds thanks to this trinket. And what they would do to break this trinket was take advantage of the fact that it didn't have an internal cooldown on when it could do damage. So, mages would use this one talent they had, that only existed in Warlords of Draenor, called Prismatic Crystal. This talent allowed them to summon a crystal which they could attack. And whenever you attack this crystal, it would increase the damage you dealt to it by a fixed amount. And then it would also deal the damage it took to everything around the crystal in an AoE. So the best way to use this crystal was to set it down at a group of mobs and then just focus target the crystal while it pulsed a whole bunch of AoE damage as it replicated all of the damage you did and added an increased value at that. So all of the mages would pop the crystal, start burst on the crystal until the trinket procced early, and then just load into with arcane missiles, which would cause the Prophecy of Fear trinket to proc each time it got hit with an arcane missile, which would damage the boss and the crystal, which would then replicate the damage again and damage the boss a second time. So since arcane mages could double dip on the trinkets with AoE explosions, with the combination of their normal high burst, the legendary ring, and their unstable magic proc, which gave them occasional extra double AoE damage, a full ray team of arcane mages, all using the crystal at once, and all getting up on the trinket at the beginning of the battle, could definitely take down a normal mode boss in less than 30 seconds. Although this was kind of gimmicky and it was the end of the expansion, so Blizzard didn't really touch it for arcane mages. Especially since in the same raid tier, trinkets dropped off the final boss, which essentially acted as additional tier set bonuses. Archimon would drop a trinket, which would morph to fit your spec to give you a spec-specific buff or ability. Very similar to modern day Azerite traits, actually. And some of those trinket effects were very strong, so Prophecy of Fear just kind of fit in with those broken trinkets, and was probably able to fly under the radar because of it. And at number 5, we have the Vial of Shadows. This was a trinket that dropped from the Dragon Soul raid in Cataclysm, and had a pretty straightforward effect, where every time you attacked, you had a chance to trigger a big chunk of extra damage. And that was it. But this extra chunk of damage just hit really hard. 
and this was also the raid tier in which Rogue specifically got a legendary weapon. So rogues with legendary daggers equipped and with this trinket could sometimes take out half of a person's health in PvP with one proc. Although before they nerfed the trinket, pretty much everyone agreed that the trinket itself was way more scary than the legendary daggers, as pretty much every opener for rogues could drop someone to 20% health instantly. Because the way modern trinkets work, which was also around in Cataclysm, is if they have a random proc chance, they usually proc pretty early as soon as combat starts. That way they start their internal cooldowns ASAP. And burst is everything in PvP, and Vial of Shadows was contributing a little bit too much to that burst, which was only made more apparent once Rogue started getting their legendary daggers as well. So Blizzard nerfed the trinket, where they cut the amount of the damage each proc did by 66%, and to compensate they made it so it would proc approximately three times as often. So in PvE, the trinket was doing about the same amount of damage overall, and this nerf was 100% put into place to stop burst in PvP by cutting the damage of each proc to one third of its previous value. And the fact that they felt the need to cut the damage proc by over 50% should tell you a little something about how hard it was hitting at the time. Although part of the reason this trinket wasn't as big of a deal was because it had a very low drop chance. So not very many people actually obtained the trinket before it even got a nerf. But it was still strong enough for the few people who did get it that it definitely deserves a spot on this list at the number five spot. And at number 4, we have the Drought of Souls, a trinket that dropped from Gul'dan in the Nighthold. This trinket had a very unique effect, as it was a melee trinket which when used would root your character in place and randomly attack nearby targets every quarter of a second for 3 seconds. So it was basically like a channeled ability for melee classes, which just did a whole bunch of damage. And the damage this trinket did would scale with your percentage based buffs, and could also crit. So what some melee classes like Fury Warriors would do, is just activate all of their extra damage buffs that gave them percentage based increases. Like their Enrage, which gave them 30% extra damage, their Artifact ability, which gave them an additional 15%, their Avatar, which gave them 20%, Frothing Berserker, which gave another 15%, and then their Battle Shout, which gave them 100% crit. They could deal about 7 million damage in the burst window those buffs provided, which was equivalent to about 2 times the HP of the average player. So if you were to use this trinket in PvP to try to burst down someone, and they were stunned or rooted in place so they couldn't get away from you, you could easily deal enough damage during the 3 second windows of this trinket to kill them 2 times over. And since the trinket did so much damage, Blizzard put in a whole bunch of nerfs throughout the expansion in order to rein it in. First, they nerfed the damage of this trinket to specific classes and specs. Like Warriors for example did 40% less damage with this trinket than other classes. They also put the trinket on the global cooldown, so you could no longer macro it together with all of those buffs I talked about. And even after those nerfs, the trinket was still best in slot for the classes that could use it. This trinket was Blizzard trying out a new idea with a trinket effect, and it being way too strong for certain classes. So they put in all kinds of emergency nerfs so it wasn't doing more damage in the classes themselves, which kind of reminds me of some of the corruption effects now in BFA. And at number 3, we have the pocket size computation device with the Cyclotronic Blast equipped. This trinket is given out to players who quested Mechagon in BFA, and is a unique trinket that allows you to choose what it does based on the gems you put into it. And for this part of the list, we'll specifically be talking about the Cyclotronic Blast gem. You see, this thing gave you a channeled ability which shot a laser at the target, which just did a whole bunch of damage over the course of like 3 seconds. And when this first came out, you could use this channeled ability at the same time as all your other spells and attacks. In this form, the trinket was so overpowered that Blizzard had to emergency nerf the item so that it acted like a real channel. So how it works now is you spend one and a half seconds to cast the trinket, and then you spend two seconds channeling the trinket into the target, and it just does a whole bunch of damage real quickly. And this damage was so good that it saw play all throughout the raid tier was introduced in, and was even used in the world first kills of Ajara, despite the fact that it was a much lower item level than all the other trinkets from the same raid. A raid which had some really top tier trinkets in it I might add. So if the nerfed version of this trinket was still good enough to be used over much higher item level trinkets, that should tell you a little something about how absolutely broken the first version of it was when it was off the global cooldown, and could be used alongside all your other abilities. This one seems almost like an oversight with how much damage it did, but a lot of the other trinkets which do direct damage are also off the global cooldown as well, and not a lot of those trinkets have channeled abilities on them so I can kind of see where the oversight came from. But for a short while, this trinket was one of the most overpowered trinkets in the game, and it's still pretty good even at the end of BFA and saw some use in the final raid tier as well. 
And at number two, we have the unnearing vision of Lei Shen. This trinket is a big part of why we no longer have snapshot dots in the game, as what it would do is on your spell attacks, you had a chance to gain a buff for four seconds, which increased your chance to crit by 100%. Now a four second 100% crit buff doesn't sound that overpowered, since it's such a short window and would only cause a couple of your abilities to crit before it went away, and you'd have to wait about a minute for it to proc again. But in Mists of Pandaria, when this trinket was around, there was this thing in the game still called snapshotting, where if you applied a dot to a target, the game would take a snapshot of your current buffs and stats, and then apply it to the dot for its full duration. So, if you applied a dot, and then someone in your party activated Bloodlust, your dot would not tick 30% faster. It would go based off what your previous stats were, and not dynamically update like it does today. However, if you managed to reapply a dot with Bloodlust running out with like one second, your full 20 second dot would have the full effect of Bloodlust for the entire duration, even though Bloodlust had long since fallen off of you. So if you had an add-on which notified you when this trinket procced, and gave you its 100% crit chance, you could then just reapply all of your dots so they would crit for the entire duration. And some specs even had ways to refresh their dots without having to reapply them, which meant they could keep the snapshotted ability for even longer than the intended durations. And some classes like Warlocks had dots that lasted for a minute straight, so you could just reapply the Doom dot every time you got a proc in the trinket, so that the Doom would crit 100% of the time throughout the boss fight. Now I probably don't need to tell you that having a dot that crits 100% of the time throughout a 5-10 to 10 minute boss fight is a little bit broken, but to Blizzard's credit, they never did nerf the trinket. Well, they did, to an extent. They made it so it would proc 40% less often for Warlocks only, but you could still keep up your dots if you played well enough. They knew it was a problem, and classes were getting way more DPS from this one piece of equipment than from everything else but they kind of left it alone for the most part until the end of the expansion. And that's because in the next expansion, they removed snapshotting from dots, and pretty much everything else. And now every time you have out a dot or hot, it will dynamically update with your stats and your short-term duration buffs. So you can no longer apply a dot that crits for 100% of the time. This is probably the only trinket on this list that didn't actually get a major nerf, even though it was overpowered. And that's because they released a whole bunch of other overpowered trinkets in the next raid tier so it just kind of fit in with the rest of them, even if it was still stronger than them. And at number one, we have the Scarab Brooch from AQ40. This trinket had an effect where when you use it on a target, it would give them a buff, which would convert 15% of the healing you did to them into a bubble. And this effect lasted for 30 seconds on a three minute cooldown. Now, since this trinket was based on percentages, not related to stats or static numbers, it was a BIS healing trinket all the way until the end of the Wrath of the Lich King despite the fact that it was released in vanilla WoW. This is kind of why trinkets don't do things like this anymore, and they give you an effect that has specific numbers and amounts, not percentage-based values. That way, they can be outdated by the time the next expansion comes out. As this trinket was even used on the world's first heroic Lich King kill, about four years after this trinket was added to the game. In fact, the effect on this trinket was so good that they modeled a legendary weapon effect after it. As healers were able to obtain a mace from Ulduar called Valinar, Hammer of the Ancient Kings, which had a chance on heal for the target to receive a buff, which converted 15% of all healing you did to him into a damage shield. So pretty much exactly like the Scarab Brooch, just for half the amount of time. Now, you know an effect is good if they give it to a legendary weapon, especially since you could use both of them at the same time, as a legendary weapon and trinket were both used before the trinket finally got nerfed in Cataclysm. You see, what they did to this trinket and a lot of other trinkets that had similar evergreen effects, i.e. effects that are useful outside of the expansion they were introduced in, was to give them a little effect that states it has a reduced effect for players above the level item it was made for. So for the Scare Brooch, it has a reduced effect for players above level 60, which basically meant it didn't work once you hit around level 80 or so, which allowed them to keep the legacy text of the trinket in the game without having to completely redesign the trinket. Now, some players love the fact that old items like this could still be useful even today, but Blizzard kind of likes for you to get new gear every time a new raid tier comes out, and people love getting new gear more than anything. So I could see some people being kind of bitter that they would never get to change one of their trinkets every time a new expansion came out. If they didn't make nerfs a trinket like this, Blizzard would just have to release more powerful versions of trinkets to force you to pick the better ones, which I think would be pretty fun in its own way as well so I don't see that as a huge problem. All right, and that's it for the list. 
There were a lot of really strong trinkets throughout the game's history, so if you think I missed any of the other ones that should have definitely made this list, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, for potential future videos on the same topic. And did you know, only 30.6% of people who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel?